Hey, you made up Ramana Maharshi. You imagined him as a guru who would offer sage wisdom to help wake you up. You imagined Nisargadatta Maharaj. He's entirely in your mind. He doesn't exist anywhere else. All of his writings and teachings and, well, I guess, really, he didn't write them. He just spoke and other people wrote it down. But all that stuff, that whole story is in your mind. Pretty nuanced story when you think about it. It's got, you know, the details of him owning a cigarette company and give, giving satsangs out of his little apartment in India. Maharshi living at, I think it's Aranchula. I think that's how you say that, the mountain that he lived at. Interacting with the animals, the stories about him having these godlike experiences with people and animals. Krishnamurti, both of them, and their unique, charming, quirky characters. Both of those guys are very quirky. And then all the Krishnamurtis out there who share their name that you may encounter. You made them up. You made up <clears throat> Madonna. Every song she ever did. It's actually you. You're Madonna. You imagined Madonna. Her whole career, her story, <clears throat> every one of her hits is all in your head. You made up Led Zeppelin, Nirvana, Stevie Wonder, The Beatles, Elvis Presley, 50 Cent, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, every music artist that ever existed. You made up <clears throat> Adolf Hitler in World War II. You made up the story of the Nazis. You made up <clears throat> the Civil War. You made up all the world wars. I guess I forget that for a moment there that that some of my viewers aren't in America so they don't give a shit about the Civil War. Uh, but you made it all up. You made up all the viewers. You made up YouTube. You made up the internet. You imagined it. You're imagining it right now. <clears throat> You made up mobile phones, technology, computers. You made up communication, the idea of one thing communicating with another thing. You made up sound. <clears throat> you made up the idea of one thing being able to register these things called sound waves and then interpret it as something we refer to as sound which appears in the form of <clears throat> speaking and music and i mean that's pretty much it you know clanking and crashing and sound <laughs> you made up wood you made up trees. You imagined these things that grow out of the ground <clears throat> and are very rigid and dense, but can be cut into and fashioned into other things. Homes, furniture, paper. You made up the ground. 
you made up the sky. You imagined that <clears throat> there's something very dense that's made up of dense objects like rocks and sand and you know, in more kind of industrialized areas, pavement, concrete. And then in contrast to them, there's air in the sky, <clears throat> which is virtually nothing. But if you look up at it, it's blue. You made that up. You imagined it being blue. And if you were to explore science, which you also made up, there'd be a reason for it. I don't remember what the reason is, but there's some reason why you know, something to do with inversions and humidity or something like that causes the sky to appear blue. And, and that against your eyes, you made up your eye and the retina and the way that, <clears throat> you know, when we dissect an eye, we see all this stuff going on and have been able to make sense of how the eye is reflecting light, registering light perceiving it through the aperture of the pupil, projecting it through the aperture of the pupil. You made all that stuff up. It's all imaginary and it exists nowhere other than in you. It all exists in your mind and there's nothing beyond your mind. The entire universe is in your mind. You made it up. You made up earth, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, the Milky Way galaxy. You made up the idea of multiverses, <clears throat> outer space. You made up the concept of vastness, vast oceans, mountain ranges, deserts, plains, you made it all up and you can perceive it from a certain point of view and it seems so vast and then you can zero in on it <clears throat> and trek through it, over it, on top of it, under it. And it can beat the shit out of you because it's so vast. The ocean can beat the shit out of you. The desert can beat the shit out of you. A mountain can beat the shit out of you. When you zoom in on it and try to tackle it, you made that whole thing up too, that, that whole story, that effect. You made up pain, you made up pleasure. You made up <clears throat> feelings that can be had and experienced when interacting with other things. The body interacts with other things, the form of the body and experiences pain and pleasure and the wide array of things that cause those and the varying levels, degrees at which those are experienced. You made it all up. There isn't a single thing that you didn't make up, that you didn't imagine, that you aren't imagining now. <clears throat> and because you're nothing in the space within which you can imagine things, you made up space, you imagine space and time and since there's no boundaries to it, you can make it infinitely complex, infinitely realistic. You can make the simulation, your simulation, the only simulation that there is feel so incredibly real. You can make, it's like in the matrix when, um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's like, he winds up being, being a traitor and he's eating a steak and he's like sided with Smith and he's eating a steak and he's like, ignorance is some talk, something about ignorance is bliss. And like, he's like, even though I know this steak isn't real, it tastes so fucking good. And that's food. When you eat food, you're just dreaming. You're just imagining that you're imagining the qualities of chewing on food, the taste in your mouth, the feeling of it going down, the effect of it <clears throat> going through your digestive system causing you to maybe have an upset stomach or get heartburn or feel better or <clears throat> have gas, diarrhea, whatever. You made all that shit up. You made up biology, 
physics, geometry. You made it all up. And you're still making it up right now. But you're waking up to the fact that you have been making it up. And that is going to likely change it, though. <clears throat> and it already is. And then it isn't, which would be perhaps a pointer towards your difficulty of letting it go. It would perhaps indicate that you are nostalgic and you don't want to let go of your toy. This is your toy thing. This is your play thing, this world. But eventually... <clears throat> Big girls and big boys have to put down their toys. And probably one of the biggest reasons you don't want to let it go is because you don't know what will happen if you do. Because you can know all about this, but if you put it all down totally and completely, and don't pick it back up. Well, you can't know about that. That's not knowable. <clears throat> so you're probably afraid of that to some extent, but you're working your way to, towards the edge of the cliff. You're prepping yourself to dive off into the abyss. And you've even dove off a few times, maybe more than a few times and you create characters who come back and tell you stories of diving off and what it's like and how wonderful it is. And you give yourself experiences of it, but you apparently aren't ready to let go completely just yet. But there's a lot of things that you're doing that are indicative of your preparations. There's a lot of things that you're doing that it would appear anyway, are pointing towards your plans of letting go completely. And, <clears throat> you know, ultimately what's funny about it is you know who you are, you know what you are, and you know that you already have let go, you, you haven't ever held on, but you have continued to engage with your world, your dream, in a way that shows that you're not letting go of it completely because if you were to let go of it completely, you wouldn't even engage with it anymore. And it's okay because there's only you. There's no one else. It's all happening in your mind. Right now we're in your dream and you made up Andrew to remind you that we're in your dream. And nobody's going to fault you for taking as much time as you need because you're, you made up time. And there is no time. And yet you keep waking up each day and becoming more and more aware of the fact that you're not actually waking up each day. It's a new day, but there wasn't a day before today and there won't be a day after today. There's just this day altered, transformed, evolved. And the fact that there's so much content surrounding your awareness of this is evidence enough that transformation is taking place plans are being executed and yet none of it's happening at all really other than in your mind nothing's happening whatsoever this is full whole complete always has been always will be in your mind but the landscape of it is destined to undergo transformation it always undergoes transformation but the transformation will correspond with your wakefulness it, it is corresponding with it and it will continue to 
and relatively speaking, it's going, you know, rather fast and then also rather slow, depending on how you look at it. But in any event, you can't stop it. You won't stop it. You don't have any intention of stopping it. And because of the way that your mind works, infinite and unbound, wild and free, it's just going to do whatever it's going to do. And you're going to just be along for the ride like you always have been and always will be. But you can bet that a lot of the things that you have done up until now, apparently, surrounding limitation and duality will dissolve, will no longer be relevant or a part of your dream, your imagination, or at least they won't be within the imagined timeline, the imagined story that you have created for yourself, but you're dissolving that too. So yeah, I think it's pretty accurate to say they won't be a part of it because, and at the same time, they are a part of it. They're always a part of it. Everything is a part of it. It's all in your mind. It isn't ever outside of your mind. So it can't go anywhere, but you can certainly perceive it differently. You can certainly manifest it differently. You can certainly imagine it differently. And in knowing that you made it all up, it will be different. It is different now and it will continue to be different. And there's really not much more you can say about it. You can try to predict it, pontificate about it, but you can't know. And part of your awakening, part of your waking up to it is to understand that there's no need to know. And any sort of need to know is what's gotten you into trouble in the first place. And so you're letting go of need, letting go of want, and just watching, just being. Catch up with you soon. Peace.